Uh, we are now at about 532. If everyone could fi please find their way to their seats, I sure would appreciate it. How about them cowboys? How about them cowboys? Okay, everyone. Yeah, what happened to my? God damn it. Okay, let's first make sure we're up and running out in Streamland, uh, Cyberland. Would someone please ping me from the out there, please? Okay, it is now uh, 6.33. We're at the city of Pasadena. That's what I meant. 5.30, well, that's, that's Eastern time. It's now 5.33 at uh, the city of Castle Hills, and we are here at the uh, special meeting. I call that meeting to order and determine whether a quorum is present. The quorum is present. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've been approached by two, two council members and uh, due to the fact that we do have a town hall at six o'clock, um, I'm going to move some items uh, we'll still do it, but I'm going to move some items to after the tech stock meeting, and which will be item B. That's a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign a letter of engagement with Armstrong and Vaughn. It's item C which is authorizing the city manager to sign a purchase order for the new fire truck. Um, we will also move item D, which is to purchase a uh, tractor for sanitation. And We will also move item G uh, to after the uh, uh, tech stock meeting is to approve uh, the city manager to confirm a venue res reservation for the uh, consultant services for the strategic planning retreat. Um, the reason I'm doing this uh, JR, do you think you can get yours done before six o'clock or do you want to move it to after the tech stop meeting? Well, you the tech stop meeting's at 6.30, isn't it, Bill? We have a six, the problem is we got a six o'clock public hearing that is, uh, it's uh, posted. So we, we need to do that one on time. And uh, we're not we're not going to disallow any of these items, but we're going to move them to the end of the 
thing. But if you think you can get what you need to get done in uh, 25 minutes, uh, we can go ahead and hear yours, and we can hear, uh, of course, Amy's nomination for the Bear County Appraisal Board. Would we still have to do the acknowledgement of recognitions as well before six? That's going to take about 30 seconds. Okay. Um, let's do it afterwards if you don't mind, sir. Thank you, Mr. Trevino. Okay, we have item uh, A. Let me make sure I get this right. Okay. We got item A, which is uh, we're going to pull that item so we can talk a little bit about it, and then we'll, we'll do a vote in the other uh, consent agenda items uh, to complete the consent agenda. So, item A is the approval of resolution number R2017-12-12A, 12 -12 -A, allocating votes for a city nominee, Amy McLinn, for the Bear County Appraisal District Board of Directors 2018 election. Uh, do, did anyone want to speak on that, or is it pretty clear what's going on? So at a previous council meeting, Mayor, the council um, approved Amy McGlynn as our nominee for BCAB. This is simply an allocation of the five votes available to the city, um, and, and uh, casting those in favor of Ms. McGlynn um, for our actual election to the BCAB. That's what we're doing. Anybody have any questions on that or any comments? Okay, um, let's go ahead and vote on that one and then we'll go down to the other ones and take them one by one since we're gonna have so much time. Uh, with that said, do I have a motion for that item please? So moved. Do I have a second? Thank you, Frank and uh, JR. So with that said, all in favor? It's uh, unanimous four to Douglas is absent at this time, please. Make a note of that. Okay. The next item we'll address during this is we'll do E, F, G, E, F, and H. All of those, E is approval of the minutes of the city council regular meeting, November the 14th, 2017. F is approval of the minutes of the city council workshop on November the 28th. 2017, we're saving G till afterwards. Then there's H, which is acceptance of the treasurer's report, special funds report ending October 31st. Do I have a motion, please? Mayor, I have some changes to the minutes. Kay. I would actually like to pull item F off of the agenda for tonight and postpone it until our next regular scheduled meeting. I have too many changes to make on the record. Okay. Um, as to item E, the minutes from November 14th, um, I have some changes for that. In the beginning section um, where it says, um, call the Castle Hills regular city council meeting to order. In that first paragraph on the first line, determined a full quorum was present. I don't think full is necessary. And the councils aren't listed. I don't know if we usually have those. Um, under citizens to be heard on non-agenda items, it talks about Mr. Baker's addressing the council regarding National Night Out and basis. He didn't say, um, he apprised the council, he didn't recommend the council. He apprised the council of updates regarding basis and recommended that we look into the status of basis's compliance with the lease and the settlement agreement. Um, also for that, um, set of minutes under old business number one considering and acting upon a resolution regarding the Bear County hazard mitigation plan um, Mayor Howell invited fire chief Dover to speak or to present on this matter. So it's a full um, Full statement stated that the chief um, Let me see as you go down into that by approving the plan by resolution It will allow the city the opportunity not to apply for FEMA grants. It would allow the city the opportunity to share costs and resources and have access to various grants from the county and FEMA to address issues with the mitigation. Um, in the next paragraph, second line, Mayor Howell acknowledged the importance of implementing this plan. It's not legislation. Um, and then in the very last item, number four, considering and acting upon an ordinance, 
the second line where we talked about um, calculating permit amounts, um, where it reads, fees currently calculate incorrectly for permits on projects with valuation is not um, proper. It should be projects with a valuation of. And those are all the changes I have for those. Okay, Minnie, did you get those? Thank you. Thank you, Minnie. And then, um, as I stated before, I'd like to pull item F and go over it. We'll pull item F and uh, address it either at the uh, December 20th meeting or at the next meeting scheduled meeting. Everybody in agreement with that? Thanks. Okay, let's go to, um, so we have a motion for uh, the acceptance of item E and H. Did we have a motion on that? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? It is unanimous. Douglas is absent. Okay, we pulled item F till next time. Looks like we have about 15 minutes. Rick, do you think you can get your uh, presentation done in, in uh, less than 10 minutes? Okay, let's go ahead and wade into it. It's B for you. Okay, let's go ahead and do B. It's approval resolution of R2017-12-12B, dash dash authorizing the city manager to sign the letter of engagement with uh, Armstrong, Vaughn, and Associates PC to conduct the 2017 fiscal year audit. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Do you have a second? All in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Douglas is uh, absent. Okay. Rick, you want to, uh, on item C, it's the approval of a resolution R2017 12 12C authorizing the strong deal. It is item D. It's approval of resolution number R2017. Dash one two dash one two D D authorizing the city manager to sign a purchase agreement for the Kubota Grand L thirty five sixty HSPC cab tractor with attachments with a two year warranty for the amount not to exceed forty three thousand one hundred ninety one dollars and nineteen cents. Mr. Herrera. How are you, Rick? <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this uh, uh, information here that I've given you has given an up update on um, revised information because unfortunately the last time I got this, they didn't give us an update of uh, the numbers for the cab was one of the um, moves on getting this tractor available for the public works. As you see there is a 43191 and we're looking at here is gonna be the 469 $40,691, and that's because of the fact that they're still gonna go ahead and give us a trade-in of $2,500, and then they're gonna go ahead and take off the freight for, for me to, I can go buy it there and go pick it up, and that's, that's the cost on that, and they're still giving us with the, as you mentioned, the two-year warranty. On the first um, uh, quote there, the 27385 that was gonna be uh, the purchase of that tractor without the cab. Both of these tractors have um, accessories that already exist with our L2900. And as you can see, the L2900 with the hours that are already involved in there, it's uh, pretty much beat up to a, a window that it needs to get traded out already. Uh, but there's only one accessory that I will have to get. It's not gonna be compatible and that'll be the backhoe. And what are we doing with the backhoe, Rick? Well, unfortunately, because of the fact that Ewall says they don't, they can't do nothing with it. He said he could put it, put it up for me to see maybe if somebody who has a, the tractor also that has a compatible backhoe to see if they can buy it. But unfortunately, he was not able to give us nothing for it. Uh, the okay. only one is for the main tractor itself, with the bucket in the front will be giving us a twenty-five hundred dollars. But they're going to give us five hundred for the for the uh, unit itself. Does it still run? Yes, sir. Yeah, most definitely has a, a five foot shredder in the back that we're doing all your frontage easements with. 
eastbound and westbound frontage roads on tech stop that we take care of and maintain. Um, it also does the area of the, uh, that big giant dead space on the Gladiota um, that um, off of a JK and Gladiota. So we, we do pretty good sections off of that tractor. And then I'll go ahead. So uh, I, I'm just asking, I don't know anything about tractors. Would it make sense just to keep it for our dirty jobs? You know, sir, I had that thought as well at the very beginning, but then when I started looking at seeing what, um, I guess we might start falling down because of the, the tractor having um, multiple parts added on, and we're doing we're doing the work because I don't want the downtime. We just go ahead and order the parts and and take care of it for get, so we can get back on the road. Um, also, also note that we do a lot of asphalt work with this, not just on our streets but in our alleys. So it also helps us uh, with the front loader bucket and the back grader to take care of, of grading out the asphalt. Um, sorry, was there a yes or no there? I'm sorry, what that was that last? So it didn't make sense to keep it. Oh right? no, sir, no. It was okay, not. Good. I'm sorry. Good. Okay. Well, good. Council, let's start on uh, the right, please. My right. Paul, do you have any questions for? Yeah, uh, I believe there's a misunderstanding, Mr. Mayor. I, unless I heard wrong, you said $500. We have a $2,500 trade-in, correct? Yes, sir, $2,500. All right, secondly, when we had the uh, tractor back in the springtime, uh, the one that replaces what we have, the Chevrolet, if you will, as opposed to the Cadillac, and uh, I guess I'm in favor of matching up with what we had it's good because if we got air conditioning problems, we got other problems, and there's more issues with it. And I know you and I talk, and you're comfortable with that also. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm I'm against spending all this kind of money on this, and I am for getting the tractor, like originally, uh, we discussed. So, that's my thoughts. Okay, Miss McGlynn, did you have any thoughts or comments for Mr. Uh, Herrera? Um, thank you for the updated quote. I'd had two questions, but this one answers it. Um, the only question I have is I noticed that this one has just has the alumin aluminum canopy top. And is that something that you feel is going to be sufficient for the needs that we discussed at the workshop with um, employee safety with hornets and wasps and all that stuff? The, the, for the canopy, that's the 27,000, Ms. McGlynn? Mm -hmm. Okay, the canopy is just to go ahead and just shelter us from the, from the heat of the sun. That's nothing else, it doesn't guard our walls or anything uh, as we're, we're mowing or anything as the cab would. Okay, so you're, I mean, I noticed there's obviously a drastic difference in price and we discussed the cab before, so I just wanna make sure that, I mean, it's a big investment either way, obviously a bigger investment with the cab, but just making sure that, that you are happy with this, you're not settling for something that um, that we're going to regret making a decision on. No. Thank you, Rick. Um, Ms. Scott, did you have any questions or comments for Mr. Uh, Harada? Thank you. Mr. Trevino. Yes, sir, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Rick, it's, it's my understanding that the biggest thing with getting a cab is the safety of the employee. Is that correct? It doesn't really increase productivity. You're, you're correct, sir. And no matter what, we'd still have the same processes to go with our same with the tractor as we're doing today. And so, while I'm aware that we need to take care of everybody that's using the machine, uh, the biggest thing being the bees. Are there areas that you know are problems, or is it just kind of everywhere? And and the reason that I'm asking, just to preface that, is I did some research and I saw that they make a uh, enclosure for the cab for about $2,500. It's not hard protective like this, but it would keep any kind of insects out. So if there's an area that we know is prone to bees, it's something the guys could put the, the windshield and the doors on and yell a bee protector. So I don't know if it's everywhere or. No, sir, it's in, uh, as I've been noting since 05, we probably had around four, maybe the most five incidents, but they're isolated in, in different areas. Um, they're going to be sometimes going to be in the foliage uh, on the tech stop foliage that we have running against the public roads, or it, it's just like one. This one is in particular that we had the other incident was um, they were inside concrete uh, brick column. I'm sorry, and then sometimes guess what? They're embedded in the ground. So once you start doing with that shredder, making all that noise, you don't even have to run over them. Just the vibration will start making them move away. But 
I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say that that that's a good thought to have have that right. If if we were to have an area that we're having constant bee problems, but um, speaking with you all tractor, uh, out of every ten, <coughs> and we're selling to San Antonio and also to the Bear County Public Works, other big um, guest companies, if you want to say government establishments, they they are selling a lot of those cab uh, enclosed cab areas, but uh, as um, Mr. Paul had something. You had uh, questions here. We spoke earlier, and I told I told Mr. Vanderwell this morning. This this piece, and, and I, I'm I'm for it. I, I would love to have to go ahead and go forth. But if they, if that air condition ever goes down, just please keep in mind that we'll have to have the downtime to go ahead and transport to the area that needs to get the compressor or what comes to uh, Freon or whatever has to get fixed. That'd be the only concern. Otherwise than that, you got to think about it. As we all know, there's a, a safety as to somebody being enclosed in a vehicle. There's almost 10 to 15 degrees higher. So we're not going to have uh, one of my employees in there and having, not, not having these things, but having heat exhaustion. Okay. <clears throat> if we were going to make any adjustments to this now, I'm sorry, Councilman Trevino, are you through? Uh, yes, sir. I was just going to add that, you know, fi for $15,000, I'd much rather invest in some additional equipment I think that would increase the productivity or if you need to replace another vehicle put that towards that and we could still buy the enclosure for almost $2,500 which would protect the employees just as well. Very nice. I like that. That's, that's good. Well that was my question. If we just have the enclosure by itself does that have any coolant in it and how, what, how does that affect the heat inside? Would that still increase the heat inside the have the 10 to 15 extra degrees by enclosing it no, with this enclosure that Mr. Trevino is speaking about? Uh, if you'd like to, Mr. Trevino, go ahead. Uh, the enclosure doesn't have AC. It's imagine like a... It's a mesh. It's almost like they have the mesh one and they have the plastic one, but it's more of just a protective uh, kind of an encapsulation of the driver so that he's not exposed to anything that's going to be a threat as far it's as like insects. You, you, see, you see them at a driving range. Yes, sir, exactly, just like that. So it would protect them from the bees, but still have enough airflow not to cause overheating of the operator? Yes, miss. Well, and so my, uh, ideally, and this makes sense in my head, Rick, but correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're going to go to a place where you know that's a concern, you can flap the, do the walls on and y'all are protected. It's not something you're going to want to drive with every day, unless it's you want to throw it on in the winter just to keep the wind from hitting y'all. It's just like your, your Jeep. I mean, you have their panels when you want to go four by four and you take them off and you put them back on when you're in the city. Thanks, Rick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, if there was any time to make any uh, amendments or adjustments to this on the table, now is the time. <laughs> let's do a, uh, let's go ahead and get it on the table so we can do that. Uh, we have, uh, I'll make a motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay, might be a good idea to read it again, but here we go. Uh, approval of the resolution number R2017-12-12D, authorizing the city manager to sign a purchase agreement for a Kubota Grand L3560 HSTC cab trailer with attachments and a two-year warranty not to exceed 43,191.19. Do I have a motion, please? Can I change it and make the motion that uh, everything you said with the exception of $27,500 max? I'd go ahead and approve the motion and then do the amendment. Is that correct, Mr. Uh, Brennan? Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a motion, please? Amendment first. Okay. So the amendment would have to be approved first. Um, uh, so it would be an amendment to the amendment original first, motion. And then, yes. The original yes, motion. Yes, I did. Oh. Do we have a, uh, a motion for that? So moved. Thanks. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Oh, thank you, Mr. Paul. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have an amendment to the original motion, please? I move that the dollar value be maxed out at $27,500, which will give him the flexibility to work with EWAL like he has been doing, and he has another company he's going to uh, discuss with. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul has a uh, amendment to the motion on the table. Do we have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Trevino. All in favor of the amendment, uh, raise your hand, please. Okay. 
three, two. Four, four to zero, <clears throat> four to, uh, it's unanimous with uh, Douglas is out for the moment. Okay, so we got the uh, amendment through. Let's go, ahead and go back to the original motion. I don't think we have to read it for a third time. Um, so we have a motion and we have a second. All in favor? Of the amended motion, correct? With the amendment. Yes. Great. Four, four to uh, one absent. Okay, thank you ladies and gentlemen. With that said, we covered everything with the exception of uh, item C and with the uh, discussion item which we have moved to the end of the uh, other agenda. We had G too. We did B also. So in other words, all we have is, uh, you're right, yours too, and item G. So what we'll do is we'll cover later in the meeting after our tech shot uh, deal, we'll cover C, we'll cover G, and we'll cover rec. Okay. Um, Mr. Brennan, do we end this or do we go straight into a public meeting? Uh, we can talk about it later. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to enter into a public hearing. This public hearing is in regards to a uh, replat, and it is. Uh, Item two, which is conduct a public hearing on a replat application from 6812 West Avenue. For those of you who aren't familiar with that property, that's the one on West Avenue where it makes the curve across the street from the hibiscus property. I'll be rereading the, uh, the uh, hearing official application right before we get into it at uh, six o'clock. But for those of you who want to see exactly where that property is, there is a map back there on the wall. And it's basically where you make that turn uh, there on West Avenue if you're heading towards Northwest Military Highway. Um, this, uh, Minnie, do we have a sign-up sheet for this? Okay. When the sign-up sheet gets up here, uh, we will base our time uh, according to uh, how many minutes are we allowed to speak on this particular item because then we're gonna go directly into our tech shot presentation which I'm assuming without looking at it, there will be a large amount of people who want to speak on that item. Just the hearing uh, many would be fine. We can hold off because there'll be more people coming in on the uh, on the text dot thing, and we want to make sure that we catch everybody. Okay, good. Um, Miss Winger, I don't know if you were here when we started, but we're moving that item one to the end of the meeting. Item one on the discussion and I will be sure that you get called, okay? Thank you. Um, I, I don't see anybody else. Is there anybody else who wanted to speak on, uh, on the, on the uh, public hearing? Okay, well, here we go. It is uh, now 6.02. And uh, we are conducting a public hearing 
on a replat application from 6812 West Avenue, LLC. This is to consider and act upon an establishing Castle Hills West Avenue plat being a 1.462 acre tract of land establishing lots 16 in parentheses 0.5014 acres and 17 in parentheses 0.9609 acres block 8 county block 5778 being a portion out of block 6 lot 6 block 8 county block 5778 castle hill subdivision as recorded in volume 980 page 393 of the deeds and plat records of the bear county texas out of joseph mclennan's survey of number two eight three two six abstract number 504 bear county texas now if anybody can repeat that i think we're all right, all right. um we have one person signed up to speak on this item. Leslie? You didn't? Okay. Okay. Is there anybody who would like to speak on this item? Sixty-eight twelve, Laverne. Is there, I'll ask again, is there anyone who would like to speak on this item? Thank you. Uh, Kurt, did you have any quick comments you'd like to make? Sure, Mayor. This is um, kind of a follow-up action. Uh, a couple months ago, the council considered this item so that if they wanted to subdivide the property and sell the back portion of the property off of separate from the front portion. So we uh, told them that they could do a replatting we put this on today because this council has 60 days to approve or disapprove the replatting. We've been back and forth with the developer several times uh, on this particular action, and I think we're really close with what they've submitted and what you have in your council packets. However, there's a couple things that I would that I would note in your council packet where you see um, on the uh, on the plat itself above lot 16 the little highlight where it says A in a uh, stop sign shaped. Um, figure and if you look in the in the key notes just up to the upper left there a says 25 foot shared ingress and egress access easement and then there's a C general note number six note on that and we're recommending some verbiage changes on that um, uh, they are required to go down and uh, on a separate instrument record this access easement uh, to my knowledge, they have not done that yet. So in order to clean this up, uh, Mr. Brennan has recommended that we uh, strike um, after replat from the end of item six and then add the following verbiage. So it would say item six would see, say future access agreements to be provided to lot 16 prior to the issuance of any building permits or certificate of occupancy for lot 16. So in other words, that would require them to do it before they got certificate of occupancy as it's written you know, it could fall through the cracks. This will require them to go down and get that instrument. And then also, um, one of the other things that we noted is on the setbacks, they're all correct for uh, General G business uh, district. However, in this particular case, um, one of the buildings is a two story, the one on the back of the lot. And so it changes the setback because you have, you, you essentially have to double it. So. The 20 foot uh, building setback line would be a 40 foot building setback line if indeed they do build a two, bu two story building there. And then on the, um, the northernmost on your map there, it says 15 foot uh, setback line, building setback line. That would be a 30 foot um, if it's a two story building. So we're uh, recommending that you clean that up a little bit by adding uh, the general note seven which would say the setbacks for the West Avenue and lots four and five boundaries of the property shall be automatically increased according to the city code if structures of more than one story are constructed on the subdivided property. So that would just capture that increased uh, building setback line. Um, I looked at the plans earlier um, for this development. 
they do show a two-story building and on their plans, they show a 40-foot building setback line across the back of the property. Um, but other than those two notes, um, uh, Janet has been over this thoroughly uh, with the developer and with LNV. And uh, other than adding those two notes, I think it's ready for council uh, consideration. And when will we take action on this? You have two options. One would be to um, uh, approve it with the addition of the verbiage that I just shared with you. Uh, the other would be to, uh, to disapprove it, to, and then they would have to come back for another replatting action, and it would reset that 60-day clock. So um, it would require another uh, public notice and so on and so forth. I would strongly suggest that council consider it today with the amended verbiage that just really uh, takes away any loopholes that you might have on this plat, and then it would be considered good. So, Mr. Brennan, where's the action item on the agenda? Did I miss something here? It, uh, it, it's got in the second phrase, the first phrase is conduct a public hearing, uh, Mayor. Oh, and it I'm goes sorry. on to say consider and act upon establishing this plat. Okay. So once you conclude the public hearing, you go into the action part of it, or can, if you choose to. Okay, I'm sorry, I was just expecting a, <coughs> a separate action item. Okay, council, we, uh, apparently nobody in the public would like to speak on this. Then I'll go ahead and move uh, to accept it with the, um, change in verbiage that Mr. Vanderwally um, said needed to be made. Okay. Anyone, uh, we have a we have a motion, do I have a second? A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Frank, do you have anything to talk about on this? Mr. Vanderwally, basically this is just cleaning up to finish what's already been set forth through our zoning, through our architect and everything else, correct? Uh, yes, sir. This is just the final act that really all that has been done before. Council has approved the previous plat. This is just for the replat that allows them to subdivide that property and maintain that access, that easement access um, through the through the front lot uh, for the people that might eventually um, develop the back lot. And it's being developed now, so right. it'll just allow them to treat the property separately. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Ms. McLean, did you have any comments or questions? No. Thank you, Ms. Scott. No. Thank you, Mr. Trevino. Uh, no, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second on the on the table. We've allowed the uh, public to speak. No one would wanted to speak. So, um, should we close the public hearing first, and then go ahead and take the vote? All right. So we're going to close this public hearing at 6:09. Okay, we have a motion on the table from Ms. Scott, seconded by Ms. McLinn, uh, for the revised verbiage that Mr. Uh, Vanewaldi stated uh, on the item. So all in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, with the exception, we're moving those two items that we talked about to the... Uh, to the next agenda uh, that we talked about earlier. Hold on a second. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. Two, no. Oh, talking about two. For 15 minutes. Why don't we just do one more? Just see how that goes. Let's go ahead and do one. Uh, this, this shouldn't take long. This is a, uh, nobody signed up for this item, by the way. Uh, this is item G. G. It's approved by minute entry to authorize the city manager to confirm the venue res reservation and sign an agreement with the consulting services for the 2018 city council strategic planning retreat. Miss, uh, Kerr, did you want to talk on this with Ms. McLean? Okay. We um, have the proposal from the consultant and we have, um, I've narrowed it down to one venue that I think would be um, extremely 
efficient for um, our first strategic planning meeting. And so I would just ask council to approve the hiring of um, Richard Lewis as the consultant and um, hire the hiring of Spice of Life Catering at the veranda. So the event will be held at the veranda. Okay. Let's go ahead and get a uh, motion and a second on the table so we can go into discussion on this item. Do I have a motion for this item, please? I move. Uh, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Let's get into discussion. Uh, we'll start on the left today. Mr. Trevino, did you have any questions or comments regarding the item on the table, please? Uh, if you can come back to me, sir, give me a second. Be glad to. Miss uh, Scott, did you have any items? Uh, item to speak about or regarding this particular thing. Now, I understand you all covered this in the workshop. We did speak on this in the workshop. Um, it's a very exciting opportunity to have some strategic planning for the city to move forward. Um, the entire city is invited to attend and be a part of it and hear and uh, what's going on. So I think it's, it, it would be very uh, beneficial for us to move forward as a, as a city. So the way I understood what you just, I, I want to make sure I totally understand is the public is invited to this uh, um, venue and uh, it is right here in Castle Hills, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. It is here in Castle Hills and it's uh, under Texas Open Meetings. It's available to anyone who wants to come. And of course, we'll support our economic uh, situation. Yes, it will so, here okay. within the city. Ms. McLean, did you have any uh, further comments or anything regarding this uh, venue or the uh, consulting team that's going to work with us? In looking at all the options, this seemed like the best opportunity to be able to provide adequate space for any residents who want to attend since this is an open meeting, but it will give council and the mayor time to meet with department heads and do some strategic planning with a consultant that can keep us on track and, and guide us into um, making some positive plans for the future of the city. Mr. Paul, did you have any questions or comments regarding the item on the table, please? I guess I'm totally against it, if that's okay. common enough. Okay. Um, the facilitator, consultant, is going to come in, and he, by definition, is going to be a facilitator. I believe in our city, our mayor is the facilitator. And he talks about, on the outline, mission statements. and the, Our mission statement is really pretty simple to state provide for the safety and welfare of our citizens. It's just not always easy to put, to implement it. This council as well as other councils have faced many challenges. Again, in our structure of the government, I strongly believe that we have a facilitator, we have a mayor, and the mayor is a facilitator. We do not need to pay somebody to do this. If we are not ready are ready to serve up for here on council, then I just don't think we should be up here. That's that's my personal opinion. I'm not against um, any off-site meetings. I'm against any off-site meetings for any reason. I feel that this is the venue, this is the city, and this is where we ought to be in our council chamber. And um, Castle Hills is also a member of the Texas Municipal League which offers uh, opportunities to anybody that wants to learn additional stuff about management as far as the government's concerned. I don't think we need to pay, pay in $2,500 for a consultant and another couple of thousand dollars for lunch to do it. That's my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Paul. So what, uh, just, so, just so everybody's clear before I wrap this thing up, who, uh, so what is the what is the fee for the consultant going to be? The consultant is twenty five hundred dollars. That includes a four hour session um, on the day of the retreat and a two hour follow up session in about sixty days after we've had our retreat to see how we're doing with making forward progress with our plan. The proposal from Spice of Life at Veranda they are not charging us a rental fee for the venue. I have I think sixteen or seventeen people on my list at fifteen dollars a head is $255 for food and drink. They are allowing us to bring all of our own AV equipment without any additional cost. So the actual cost for the whole thing should be under $3,000. Just so the, thank you. Just so the public knows, uh, 
this is something new to Castle Hills. It is not new to small cities. City of Alamo Heights does this. City of Balcones Heights does this. I did not check with Terrell Hills. Um, Schertz does this. Uh, personally, it's really, really hard for me to, and as most of you know, I work for the largest food service company in the world, retired, and this is something that we normally do. We get together, uh, whether you're a uh, work at one of the large companies in this city or not, power lunches, whatever you want to call them. What it does is it allows us to get out, get out of the chambers. It allows us to get into an environment where um, uh, we can express our ideas in a way that uh, we, we might not do here. The public's invited, so anybody can come. It helps stimulate our economic growth because it's right here in Castle Hills. Uh, if you can't afford the $15, I'm sure that uh, uh, they'll give you iced tea or, or something. I didn't mean that any other way than I was said. If you can't afford it, see me, okay? Uh, personally, uh, I, I think it's a good idea. I didn't come up with the idea, but I, I think it's a good idea for us to uh, do some things that we haven't done in the past. And so um, I would hope that council would, would move this through and at least try this one time. So we've had consultants come in and uh, we've had master plan committees come in. We've had just about any, everything in the world uh, come in and give us advice. So I don't see why it would hurt to, to give this a try and see if we can make some some. Uh, new inroads and, and ways in the way that we communicate with each other. So, with that said, um, we have a motion and we have a second on the table. Uh, is there anybody else who wanted to say anything about this, Mr. Paul? Do, oh, Mr. Trevino, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Go thank ahead. You. Um, Ms. McGlynn, when we had talked during the workshop, uh, a friend of mine does, does this with San Antonio and he meets with uh, the council members individually to get a better idea of what they're thinking uh, aside from, you know, apart from the group. I thought that that in was included in his time. Is it not to have individual meetings with the council members? His proposal didn't include that, but there is a pre-planning meeting that he would like to set up soon. And so I don't see why we couldn't have council member or alderman come in and talk with him for a few minutes while we're having the pre-planning meeting. I don't see why that would be a problem. I was just trying to get a better idea because as it looks right now, he's only here for six hours, which puts him at $420, $416 an hour. He is doing a planning meeting with the mayor, city manager, and select members of council, the four hour half day, which actually ends, I think will end up being a little bit longer. A small work group would be created to focus and then a two hour follow up. So yeah, that's pretty much what he has on here. I don't know what kind of background work he does once we've given him, once he's worked with us or what he does after the initial meeting. He may have hours that he spends putting together our program. I'd, I'd also like to raise the question if this is the best time to do it. Um, you know, we do have elections in May where half of the council is up. And as much as I would love to be here again in June, I don't, none of us are guaranteed to be here. Um, you know, that's four months away. Is, would it be worth it to have it at the end of May? Yeah, yeah, I feel like we need to have it before we go into the next, next budget cycle. And so the sooner we have this, the sooner we can start planning this into next year's budget cycle, which will start in the summer. If we wait till after elections, then we'll be looking at another year before we start making any progress towards a plan. Council, why don't y'all uh, talk about, I mean, we can talk about at a time at, at a later date so we don't get bogged down with that, but I would definitely like to see it before the election. I would see if we could, we could. Uh, I'd like to call a vote. You want to call a vote? Yes. All right. We had somebody call a vote. So with that said, we have a motion and we have a second. And uh, all in favor? All opposed? <laughs> Thank you very much. Call for the vote again. All in favor? 
All opposed? The mayor votes in favor. And we will decide on a date later on down the line. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a five minute break, please. And um, we will be getting back with our presentation from text.com. So the uh, special meeting is adjourned at this time. Do we need to make a motion? Excuse me? Yes, do we have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Go sit down back in the